One morning, Thomas wasn't feeling well. He was having trouble building up steam. You must go to the works, Thomas. Probably just some faulty tubes we can easily fix. And Edward came to take Thomas away. Cheer up. You'll be back in service in no time. The Fat Controller brought Boko to help while Thomas was away, and Mavis also lent a hand with the goods work. Daisy sometimes had to pull rolling stock as well, if the other engines were too busy. She didn't mind pulling coaches like Henrietta, but one thing she hated more than ever were trucks. Thomas has got quite fine coaches. Annie and Clarabelle were flattered. Woo, we do like him. Indeed, but the idea of pulling your passengers is getting obsolete. Uh, isn't that the definition of a train? <laughs> What I mean is, with more diesel rail cars like me, the passengers would be in the locomotive, and there would be no need for fussing about shunting coaches. Oh, do excuse me, I must go. Must get these passengers to their destination. Ah, I get them to their destination, and precisely on time as well. Later, Daisy was resting in the shed when the fat controller came looking very anxious. Daisy, please do me a huge favor and take some trucks from Farquhar to the quarry. There's a shortage and they need more. Would you do that, please? Daisy glared. Trucks? Sir, can't Mavis do it? Mavis is extremely busy. Thomas would normally do this job. What about Percy? Just do it, please. Daisy growled and scuttled to Farquhar. There were only five trucks, but they were very old and dirty. Daisy was disgusted. Trucks! The indignity! She coupled up to the trucks and headed off to Anofa Quarry. It's a very short distance from far, far to the quarry, but engines have to go very slow because the railway is old and extremely windy. At first, only engines with cow catchers could ride on it, as Thomas found out with a policeman. But the law has since changed because most farmers nowadays are smart enough not to let their livestock roam around near a quarry. Daisy enjoyed the line, but she did not like going slow, especially while pulling dirty trucks. At this speed, we'll be at the quarry by Christmas. Come on, driver, this is pathetic. Now, Daisy, you know the speed limit is 25 miles per hour. Besides, we're almost there. Daisy growled as she strolled over the magnificent stone bridge. At last, she reached the quarry. Mavis was pleased to see her, but was too busy shunting to say hello. The foreman spoke to Daisy's driver. Thanks for bringing these, but could you shunt them onto the other line so Mavis can put them in the mine shaft? Will do. Daisy's driver was in a hurry to get the job done. He jumped into Daisy's cab, pulled the reverser, and accidentally put the throttle to maximum. He didn't realize this, and leaned out of the door to watch where Daisy was going. Then, it happened. He suddenly realized the throttle was on full, but then lost his balance and fell out of Daisy. Daisy kept going on without him. Oh no. Oh crap. Help! Stop me! But Daisy had already left the quarry, and raced faster and faster down the line, and the guard had already left the brake van. Contact Farqua! Quickly! She'll derail on the quarry line going that fast around the bends. Fortunately, Daisy didn't, but she was extremely frightened when she whipped around them. Dear God! Woo! The trucks were delighted. On, on! Faster, faster! At Farqua, workmen waited at the station to jump onto Daisy and stop her. However, they didn't know how fast she was actually going. Here she comes, get ready! But Daisy was going so fast that when the workmen tried to jump on her footplate, they bounced off like bouncy balls and injured themselves. What are you trying to do, dent me? Daisy rocketed by Boko with Annie and Clarabelle. Oh my goodness! 
What are you doing, Daisy? Having a very frightening experience, that's for sure. All trains on the branch line were halted and diverted into sidings. Percy and Gordon sat waiting at Ellsbridge. A runaway? <laughs> Probably another line of trucks who someone forgot to couple. No oh, little demons. And delaying my train because of them too. Or it could be a... Help! What, what on earth? earth? Good Lord! There was no way to stop Daisy by jumping on. So when the Fat Controller heard the news, he hatched a plan. Hmm. I know. Henry and James are just outside. The Fat Controller rushed out of his office into the station. Leave your trains here. I need your help. And the engines were positioned according to plan. Let me get this straight. You want us to act like buffers? Like Daisy would crash into us at full speed? With all due respect, sir, I think it would be easier to simply have an engine chase Daisy and grab her with a rope, like Edward did to me. You were only going like 40 miles per hour and you weren't pulling anything. Edward's right. Daisy could be going about a hundred, and she's probably already past... Oh, God. Here she comes! Go backwards, so the impact won't be as strong! The Fat Controller quickly leapt into Henry's cab, and the engines reversed. Brace for impact! Oh, come on! You've got to be kidding! Ah! Henry and James put every ounce of steel into their brakes, but Daisy was still going too fast. Go on! Use your brakes! We're trying! Eventually, they reached the Little Western, but still weren't slowing down enough. Oh, it's useless. I'm going into the brake van. The driver climbed out, made his way among Henry's boiler as they thundered through Tidmouth Hall. The driver then climbed onto the brake van. All right. One, two, three! The driver slammed on the brakes. The engines braked so hard that sparks flew from the wheels. The train slowed down slowly, and judging his moment, Henry's driver leapt out of the brake van onto the ground, then jumped into Daisy's cab. At last, the train came to a complete stop. The engines were all exhausted. And we have officially stopped. The crew all cheered. The engines were too exhausted to say anything, but made a feeble smile. The Fat Controller leapt down from Henry. Well done, Henry and James. And Daisy, this was purely an accident, so you are not to blame. But we must not let this happen again, needless to say. Well, that's a relief. Just then, Edward arrived. I've got no work right now, so I can take those trucks of yours back to the quarry. That would be much appreciated, Edward. <sighs> also, Thomas has been repaired, so he'll be back tomorrow, so there'll be no more trucks for you to check. You don't mind, do you? Oh, please. Trucks are dirty and smelly. I'm highly sprung, and anything smelly is, is bad, bad for your swerves. swerves. We, we know, know it. it. Thank you.